your breastbone. That's the bone, the long bone in front of your chest that divides your chest more or less into left and right. And with that hand, explore the width of the breastbone and the length of the breastbone. If you don't have uh, a mental image of what the breastbone is like, perhaps it will form as you use your hands. But if you'd like a little bit of um, a visual map, the skeleton is standing here right in front of the room and you can pop up and have a look at this breastbone that spans from the neck all the way down to the middle of the torso. So do take your time. Uh, let your fingers land on you purposefully. So they're kind of seeking, inquiring fingers. Fingers that want to know the length of the breastbone, the width of the breastbone, the shape of the breastbone, where it curves, where it dips. Now, you know, behind that breastbone lies one of your most important organs in your whole body. There are many metaphors in every language throughout the world that relate to this particular organ. It's what you give away when you fall in love. It's what gets broken when you fall out of love. It's right behind there, behind that long, wide, beautifully shaped breastbone of yours. And if you land with your fingers in that listening mode onto the breastbone itself and you stay listening with the fingers, you'll feel the activity of that organ through the breastbone inside yourself. Now your organ, uh, your, uh, your breastbone might be on the surface, but this organ lies right in the very middle of your thorax. It's central. As we go through this ATM, please every now and then remember the depth, the center of your thorax where this organ is. Please roll onto your front and prop yourself up onto your elbows and forearms. In that kind of sphinx-like pose, your forearms directed forwards of yourself 
and now. In this new position, here's your breastbone. Do you have a memory of its length? Do you have a memory of its width, of its shape, its contour? And then if you go further into yourself behind the breastbone, can you feel what's beating behind there? Very gently, very slowly, start to lower your breastbone towards the floor and then return. That's all. And when I say towards the floor, I don't mean towards the floor and forward in the direction of your hands. I don't mean towards the floor and backwards in the direction of your pelvis. I mean downwards in the same way an apple would fall if you let it drop from your hand. Have your elbows underneath you so that the bones support you. That's what they're for. Bones are there for support, like the ground is there for support when you stand and walk on it. Now, shift your attention from thinking of your breastbone going towards the floor to the organ that is behind your breastbone going towards the floor. And notice if that produces a different experience. Yeah. <laughs> So if you direct your attention more deeper internally and move from there, does that yield a different experience for you? Now, I'll leave it up to you for the rest of this lesson where you want to direct your attention. Breastbone, organ behind the breastbone, or the spine behind the, breast, behind the organ. Wherever you want to direct your attention, that's fine. Please pause, have a rest for a little break, a little break. Recall what you were doing with your head. Was your, your face directed towards the floor? Was your face directed forwards of yourself in the direction your fingertips were pointing? What was it doing? How did you organize your head? Please prop yourself up onto your forearms and elbows and explore the possibility of having your face towards a horizon in forwards of yourself in the direction your fingertips are pointing. And now in this organization, in this orientation of your head, start to lower your breastbone towards the floor directly underneath you. I guess relative to your body, it's in front of you, isn't it? and come back. Your spine is sinking between the shoulder blades. Your breastbone is moving towards the floor. Somewhere between the two, The center of yourself is moving. Mm. 
do a few more movements like this and then completely change the orientation of your head. Let your head hang from your neck. That means giving over all the tension that you usually have in the neck to keep your head upright. And then do what you've been doing. Lower the breastbone towards the floor. Sink the shoulder blades between, sorry, sink the spine between the shoulder blades. Move the center of your chest. Stay up high on your arms. Yeah? Keep your elbows underneath your shoulders. That's it. Nice. As your spine goes, sinks between the shoulder blades and then rises up through the shoulder blades, is it possible to just sit, let your head keep hanging? That you can let your head be while other parts of yourself move through space, doing the work. Okay, let that be, please. Rest again. Roll onto your back and lie on your back. If you're comfortable with your legs long and lying on the floor, have them like that. However, if that is a source of discomfort, please bend your legs and stand your feet. slide both of your arms along the floor until they're lying on the floor level with your shoulders with the palms towards the ceiling. The arms are long, they're at shoulder level, lying on the floor and the palms are towards the ceiling. Start to move your right shoulder blade in such a way that your arm gets pushed further to the right away from your body and it'll slide along the floor and then bring it back. Move your right shoulder blade in such a way that you experience your right arm sliding on the floor sideways, further to the right, and then bring it back. Notice what happens in your breastbone. Now, the next time that you return the right arm, please explore the same intention, but with the left arm. Move the left shoulder blade in such a way that you experience your left arm sliding on the floor long and the hand moving further and further away, sideways, away from your chest. and then return. And this is a movement 
of your shoulder blade expressed through your arm. The next time you're, you return your left arm to a place that you recognize as where you started from, stop there. And now do the opposite with your right arm. Move your shoulder blade in such a way that you feel your arm gets drawn into you, but the length of the arm still points sideways. So don't bring your arm beside you or above your head. Keep that line of the arm and draw the shoulder blade in towards the spine and then return. Notice what happens with your chest and with your breastbone. And the next time that you return your shoulder blade to the place that you recognize as roughly the starting place, stop there and explore the same intent with the left arm. Move the shoulder blade, that left shoulder blade, closer to your spine, drawing the left arm in towards yourself. The arm stays long on the floor. Okay, return and then please pause for a little while. I don't know, I think there's people and there's place and there's things and there's activities and there's facts and then there's time. Oh, yeah, I do like listening to music. I think you'd call that an activity. And probably most people in this room like to listen to music and to use Melody's words because it stirs you in a kind of a certain fashion. Most likely, we all have a particular taste in music. The music we like to listen to in order to experience such and such. Please roll onto your front. Prop yourself up onto your elbows and forearms. Make sure that your elbows are directly underneath your shoulders so that you can really rest on the pillar of the humerus. That you can rest on humor. Us. And start to do what you did before. Sink your spine between the shoulder blades so that the breastbone goes towards the floor and then return. Notice what that feels like to do now, having done those movements of sliding your shoulder blades and arms. Now, remember, you can shift your attention from the back of the spine to the middle of your chest, to the front of your chest and the breastbone. And each shift of attention, you will detect something different. Something will change in your experience of the movement. 
And as well as that, you can do the movement with the head hanging. You can do the movement with the face directed forwards of yourself. And not to complicate things, you could do the movement with your head in line with your spine. Can you see there's lots of different options? Each option offers a different experience. whether the option has to do with switching where you have your attention or whether the option has to do with how you position parts of your body relative to each other doesn't really make much difference. They will both produce a different experience. If you're listening, if you're not listening, then there is no experience. Okay, let that be, please. Pause. Please prop yourself up onto your forearms and elbows once more. Make a choice about what you want to do with your head and stick to it. Now, shift your weight so that it's supported fully by that right arm. And lengthen out your left arm so that the palm of your hand is on the floor, out in forward of yourself, and the elbow is completely off the floor. And now in this asymmetrical position, please sink your spine between your shoulder blades and return. Now, I said about your head, you know, put your head in a particular place, make that choice, stick to it. Well, stick to it long enough to feel what happens when you have your head like that. And then once you know, once you've had a taste of that experience, then make another choice for your head and taste that. What experience happen, arises when you have your head in this second position? And then once you've tasted that, you've got a third position. So you make a deliberate choice. You listen to the experiences that come with that choice. And then you switch. And then you listen to the next experience that comes up. Pause, let that be. And now come up onto your elbows and forearms once again and do the same intent, explore the same intent, leaning over the left arm and the left elbow. Have the right arm long ahead of yourself, the palm of the floor. Make a choice with what you're going to do with your head. Sink your spine between your shoulder blades. And you'll probably experience that the muscles associated with one shoulder blade are working a lot more than the other. 
you might experience that your breastbone heads towards the floor in a slightly different direction, a slightly different trajectory. You might feel that the movement is heavier, lighter, thicker, thinner, more buoyant, more sinking. Don't know. Bring that right arm underneath yourself. And so now prop yourself up onto both elbows and take the breastbone towards the floor so that the spine sinks between the shoulder blades and then return. And you're looking for a choice about your head that suits you. That when you have your head in that position, the movement feels possible to do and beyond possible, it feels pleasant to do and you like what you're feeling. That's the kind of choice you need to make with your head. Okay, let it be. Pause again, please. So your choices can be determined by what is right socially <laughs> or your choices can be determined by what pleases you, what you find pleasure in, what you find enjoyment in. And the two are not necessarily compatible. But there is one thing absolutely true, and that is what you like, no one can tell you, no, you don't like that. No one can tell you that. Because it's not possible. You know you like it. The only way anybody convince you otherwise would be to literally brainwash you to brainwash you into thinking you don't like that. Please roll onto your back again. Have your arms out to the side, level with your shoulders, palms to the floor. Yes, palms to the floor. And now slowly, Start to draw, start to move both shoulder blades in the direction of your spine. And then return. So both shoulder blades move together the same amount in the same timing. As you make this movement, Look for a way of moving your shoulders that gives you space behind you to move. And whatever you do, don't press the back of your head into the floor. Don't do that. Just let the head lie quietly on the floor. And look for a way to create space for the shoulder blades to come together behind you. Maybe you'll need to move your pelvis a little bit. Maybe you'll need to arch your back a little bit. But only do so if it makes sense in regards to what you're doing with your shoulders. So already there's a kind of an appreciation there, an aesthetic, sensory, kinesthetic, proprioceptive, kinetic appreciation. 
if I just do a little bit of that with my lower back, does that suit what I'm doing with my shoulders or does that interfere? Does that go with the intent? Is it harmonious with the intent? Or am I creating a dissonance? Continue what you're doing, but flip your arms towards the ceiling so that the palms are towards the ceiling and notice what kind of difference does that make. Your palms were towards the floor, now you flip them towards the ceiling. Does that better enable you to bring the shoulder blades towards the spine or does it kind of hinder a little bit? So make a choice. Make a choice about what works for you and beyond that, what feels nice to do for you, keeping with this intention. And, you know, throughout the world, there are so many recordings of one particular musical composition, but played in a different way by different artists. Because the artist likes playing it that way, which is different to the way another artist plays it, or another artist, or another artist. And yet it's the same piece of music. So here it's the same thing. The intention remains the same. But you form it in such a way that you can say to yourself, yeah, I like to play it this way. Now, increase the size of the movement. Think of sending your, hair, your shoulder blades far, far away from your spine and then gather them close, close into your spine without bending your elbows. Now, that doesn't mean you have to stiffen the elbows. It just means that the elbows can be quiet and the arms are being moved through the motion of the shoulder blades. Have you made a choice for your hands? Palm down, palm up. Maybe there's another choice. Maybe, maybe if you have your little finger resting on the ground and the thumbs towards the ceiling, maybe that would make a difference. Now, move the right shoulder blade away from the spine as you bring your left shoulder blade towards the spine. And then switch that over. Take your left shoulder blade away from the spine as you bring your right shoulder blade towards the spine and alternate like that, sending one arm further away from yourself sideways as you bring the other arm closer to yourself. Notice that when you do this movement asymmetrically, one side doing one thing, the other side doing another thing, does your head start to move? Does your chest move differently to how it moved before? Is there any echo of motion in your pelvis? Gradually make the movement smaller and smaller and smaller until it's undetectable. 
until it's almost a thought. And some of you might find that when you reduce the amplitude, the vigorousness of the movement, and bring it back to just being almost a thought, you actually feel more, you experience more. Because the auditorium has gone really quiet. The lights have gone down, the musicians have stopped warming up, and they're about to play, and everything has gone on hush. And then the music starts, and you hear it vividly. So the same thing. For some of you, this way of working will suit you down to a T. Moving at the level of thought. Let that be pause. Just lie quietly for a moment. And reflect on the kinds of experiences you've created for yourself. If you were to play that kinetic melody again, was, would there be something that you would retain? Would there be something in your manner of playing that you'd do differently? Please, slowly, roll to one side. Come up to sitting. Come up to standing. Notice how you experience yourself standing, which is a little bit of a different question, isn't it? Rather than how are you standing, if you say to yourself, how do I experience myself standing? Walk a little bit and don't notice what walking's like. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't notice what walking's like. That's forbidden. Don't do it. But just rock on home. Bit of deep purple would be right on hand right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Bye.